Chapter 26 Entering a demonic mental state as Claude neared him Han Shao grimaced and gave a low moan. He ducked his body and head and reached for his ankle as if inspecting the injury to his ankle. Next, to him Cal frowned involuntarily as he saw Han Shao's actions. He propped Han Shao up with one hand and said are you alright? Is your ankle injured? Let me take a look. Nothing much just that I twisted it a bit just now. Han Shao responded lowly with a drooped head and a bent over body. Claude and the other night students had arrived by this time. The others had come later and did not recognize Han Shao. There were many present who were wounded or crippled and so Han Shao's performance didn't attract too much attention. Claude flicked a glance at Han Shao and thought nothing of it passing by Han Shao as he chatted and laughed with his peers. Han Shao's ankle was indeed twisted and had swollen up by now. Cal gave a soft gasp upon seeing it it's swollen up so much let me take you home. Seeing that Claude's footsteps were going further away Han Shao stood up straight again and wiggled his ankle spinning off his toes. He smiled at Cal I suddenly feel much better. Thank you, Gal. No worries about taking me back. Han Shao's walking pace picked up after he finished speaking and he quickly disappeared around the corner without a trace or making another sound. Cal shook his head his face utterly perplexed as he watched Han Shao suddenly become hale and hearty. What a weird person. Han Shao dragged his battered body back to the necromancy major of the school of magic when the sky was about to turn dark. Now that his necromancy errand duties had been taken over by Carrie and Borg Han Shao didn't need to expend too much effort. He lined up for his dinner after returning and went directly to the warehouse. He immediately started using the magical yuan to continually rebuild and reforge his body after he locked the door. There wasn't a single inch of his body that didn't cry out in pain. His skin tendons and bones had all suffered severe damage. The magical yuan circulated his body again and again according to the principles of practicing magic. Han Shao could feel a bit of his strength return from the fiery mass of pain that was his current body body each time the magical yuan completed a circulation. The magical yuan churned continuously throughout the process and it seemed to have grown just a tad bigger bringing a new surprise to Han Shao. It looked like the time and effort spent on strengthening his body was also a process of gradual improvement for the magical yuan. He would have to endure this kind of injury in the near future in order to fortify his body. The pain in his body eased up after midnight and Han Shao switched to practicing the mystical glacial spell fire at this time. He circulated the magical yu onto his fingertips and palms of his hands according to the instructions of the mystical glacial spell fire. Time flew as Han Shao sank into a strange oblivious mindset. There were no distractions in his mind just the perseverance and tenacity to train. He had long since forgotten the pain and injuries of his body and just kept circulating his magical yu on according to method prescribed by the mystical glacial spell fire. Han Shao had pre previously restrained himself when practicing magic. He would awaken at a set time and had never immersed himself like he had today. Han Shao had lost himself in a today forgetting the passage of time forgetting his sense of self forgetting all mundane distractions. Bam! The small door to the warehouse suddenly banged open startling Han Shao out of his reverie. He frowned and his eyes shot like cold lightning to Jack's body. Jack shuddered in fright under Han Shao's stare only exhaling softly when he saw the cold lightning in Han Shao's eyes fade away. Brian so you really were in the warehouse. I thought something happened to you. Han Shao immediately checked his body's condition after being startled awake. He suddenly realized that his originally heavily injured body had mostly healed and that the magical you on circulating within his body was a bit stronger than before. His mental strength also showed more clarity than before. What could happen to me? I only slept in one day that's all. Borg and Carrie are cleaning for me in Anyway there's nothing to do. Han Shao cracked his stiff neck as creaking noises sounded. When Han Shao got up from the small wooden bed and stretched his body all the bones in his body sounded with crisp pa. Pa. Sounds leaving Jack dumbfounded where he stood. After a while Jack finally reacted in surprise when the strange sounds had disappeared from Han Shao's body. He called out involuntarily Ah oh, Brian you didn't sleep in for just today. You haven't appeared in six days. I knocked on your door for a long time without any response from you I thought something happened to you. Han Shao was also astounded by Jack's words. Had he trained for six whole days? He creased his brow and then suddenly recalled the mention of entering 
a demonic mental state within Chu Kang Lin's memories of demonic magic. Some practitioners would be able to enter a demonic mental state due to fortuitous coincidence. It varied accordingly and the demonic mental state was further split into either an aggressive or passive state. Some practitioners' minds and disposition would drastically change upon entering the demonic mental state and they would thirst for and feast on blood and murder. Their bodies would feel no pain and both their magic and physical body would be greatly enhanced upon entering the mnemonic mental state. They would be unable to pause for even a second and would only seek to continuously destroy everything and everyone in front of them. This was the aggressive type of a mnemonic mental state. The other kind was what Han Shao had experienced earlier suddenly entering a demonic mental state during practice. It was a vague foggy process undetectable by the practitioner but his internal processes and magical yuan circulation would be greatly heightened compared to typical training conditions. He wouldn't be able to sense his own training status but would be able to discern a huge change within his body when he awoke. The first type of demonic mental state ordinarily occurred after the rational mind had lost itself due to severe interference. If the practitioner didn't die in the course of the endless killings spurred on by the mnemonic state his body's energies would be greatly harmed along with other side effects. Han Shao's peaceful demonic state was the much better option. Most entered this bizarre mental realm during training and could feel the increase in their strength when they awoke. Oh that's because I've been a bit sleepy lately and slept too deeply. Right what do you need me for? Han Shao realized that his stomach felt empty as he spoke and immediately understood that his body greatly needed food and nutrition after going six days without eating. Jack withdrew a large piece of bread for Han Shao as he looked at Han Shao rub his stomach. I was worried about you and Master Fanny told me to tell you to go to her lab. Oh yes Lisa was asking about you too. I don't know if she wants to make trouble for you again. I see. I'll go to Master Fanny's first. Let's go. Han Shao munched on Jack's bread as he walked out of the warehouse. It was a good thing that Han Shao had shoved the little skeleton underneath the bed during this time. Jack hadn't seen anything amiss when he'd barged in. After he relocked the door that Jack had come crashing through Han Shao made straight for Fanny's lab. Knock knock knock. Han Shao stood at the entrance to Fanny's lab and raised his hand to knock. Come in. Fanny's gentle and soft voice sounded from the lab. Han Shao opened the door and stepped into the lab upon hearing it. Several magic scrolls were placed on the pedestal in the middle of the lab. Mysterious and exquisite magic words and diagrams were tattooed on the scrolls. Even someone who had just set foot into the halls of magical rocky like Han Shao could feel the strong magical currents from the scrolls from a far distance away. At that moment Fanny was chanting an incantation as she bent over tracing beautiful lines on the magic scrolls as she dipped a long elegant nail into the brown magic solution to the side. Those delicate lines looked random but also gave a wondrous feeling of extreme harmony. Fanny finished outlining the scroll after a while and injected magic into the scroll after reciting an incantation. A desolate lonely and dark aura immediately started emanating from it as a dash of brown light flashed over the scroll. It then rolled itself up automatically. When she had stored the finished magic scroll Fanny lifted her head and smiled involuntarily. Oh it's Brian. How's your back doing? Thank you for your concern Master Fanny. The injuries on my back are all healed. Han Shao nodded and responded. Han Shao understood he couldn't continue to play the fool. Although doing so would bring some benefits to him it would create more trouble sooner or later. Since that was the case it would be better to slowly change himself and let everyone unknowingly accept his new self. Therefore people wouldn't find it surprising that he had changed and would actually think that he had suddenly seen reason again after being crazy. The previous owner this body Brian had suffered greatly in the necromancy major. Han Shao had vowed to take revenge for Brian when he climbed out of that tomb. A lesson had been more or less taught to carry Borgbach and Lisa enacting quite a bit of revenge for Brian. Han Shao still remained in the necromancy major in order to lay the groundwork for future plans. After gaining a better understanding of this world Han Shao realized that he would have to continuously become stronger if he wanted to thrive in this world. The Babylon Academy of Magic and Force was a place to continually improve him himself. He remained here in order to take advantage of the school's resources to further raise all aspects of himself including strength knowledge and a full understanding of this world. Therefore Han Shao knew that he couldn't continue to be crazy and needed to change himself bit by bit. Oh, 
That's wonderful. We're just about to take a field trip and bring students to the outside world. They will be testing themselves on the development of their magic. Come with us. You can pick up after them and I can take a good gauge of your body condition on the road. What do you say, Brian? Fanny put down the items she held in her hand and smiled at Han Sha Oh. Han Sha Oh stood motionless thought for a bit and felt that this was a chance. He nodded involuntarily sure. Chapter 27 Hot damn I'm awesome. Alright then we set off in two days. Use these next few days to prepare. As for your errand duties, I'll ask the school authorities to temporarily hand them over to the other three so no worries there. Fanny smiled charmingly upon seeing Han Sha Oh agree. Her beautiful face was even more tempting and moving because of her smile making Han Sha Oh's heart lurch slightly. Before he'd arrived in Brian's body Han Sha Oh's life could be categorized as a failure. Not only had he accomplished nothing professionally speaking but his love life had also been in shambles. He still didn't know anything about being with a woman to this day. Once he came to this world Han Sha Oh's self-control had decreased and his various desires desires had increased due to practicing magic. Han Sha Oh was someone who died once before. The depressing and pointless morass of his past life had completely bound his past self. Adding to that was the weight of his family and his shy personality which had resulted in him never daring to act on the evil thoughts that he dreamed up. And now in this completely foreign world with his increasing strength due to practicing magic many of his previous constraints had disappeared. He naturally wished to live without regrets and fully materialize all the daydreams that had always been buried in his inner heart. And women particularly beautiful women had been an uncontrollable urge in Han Sha Oh's heart. Fanny was not only beautiful and mesmerizing she also paid particular attention to Han Sha Oh's well-being and he was at the age that desired the fairer sex most ardently. He would naturally have unavoidable desires. With the principles of demonic magic demanding that a practitioner do as he wished Han Sha Oh naturally viewed Fanny as the prey of his affections. Master Fanny are the dark creatures we summon always different? Is it possible to summon the same creature after sending it back to the other dimension? Since Han Sha Oh had promised Fanny to accompany them on their outing he started making preparations for his own affairs. Han Sha Oh had no advantages besides his summoned small skeleton that he could rely on. Although he could still contact the skeleton within a certain range it would likely be difficult to remain in contact with the current level of his mental strength once he set out and they were separated by a vast distance. If the little skeleton got into any trouble because Han Sha Oh wasn't here to control it with his mental strength then things would get sticky. Although Han Sha Oh was confident that he'd be able to send the little skeleton back to the other dimension he didn't know if he would be able to summon it again. Therefore he wanted to solve this problem before setting out. As the teacher for the necromancy major Fanny would naturally know more about these things. Just because Han Sha Oh had no way of solving his conundrum did not mean Fanny didn't hence his questions. Fanny looked at Han Sha Oh in confusion as soon as his question was asked. Her sexy full lips moved as she asked Hey Brian why are you asking these questions? These are things that necromancy students should pay attention to. You shouldn't care about these things. Oh, this is Lisa's question. I was just asking you for her. Han Sha Oh nodded and spoke with a good Samaritan expression. Fanny didn't suspect a thing after Han Sha Oh's response. She understood that Lee Sin often practiced necromancy magic on Han Sha Oh and thus, it made sense for Lisa to ask a question through Han Sha Oh. She thought for a while and then said so that's the case. It's not that one can't summon the same creature after sending it to the other dimension it's just that there's no need to do so. Every time a dark creature is summoned from the other dimension it or a group is merely chosen at random from a crowd of similar level dark creatures according to the mental strength powering the incantation and the chant itself. Because they are the same level of dark creature their strength is roughly the same and thus. No one cares about these matters. Then what should be done in order to resummon the same dark creature after it's been sent back to the other dimension? Han Shu thought quickly and asked a follow-up question. Fanny carefully put away the magic scrolls on the pedestal and ran her beautiful long fingers over the top of the pedestal. She frowned as she explained if you really want to resummon a dark creature sent back to the other dimension then leave a magical brand on its body. Lock on to the original dark creature through the magical brand the next time you summon 
resummon it, you can find the original creature this way and resummon it out of the other dimension. Han Shao's heart was immediately overjoyed upon hearing Fanny's words but his forehead creased in a frown as he muttered to himself. So that's the case I wonder if Lisa knows how to leave a magical brand on a summoned dark creature. After looking at Han Shao oddly Fanny smiled and said softly, Brian you truly are a very kind person. I know that Lisa has not been the friendliest to you and the problems with your body resulted from her agony of the soul. Yet not only do you not carry a grudge but you constantly think about her. There are few as pure and kind hearted as you these days. Pure, kind hearted. Han Shao was speechless internally but maintained maintained an honest smile on his face. He scratched his head and said with some embarrassment I don't think a grudge should be carried no matter the reason. People will understand if you treat them kindly. Hey hey. Fanny laughed softly and nodded as she heard Hansha O's words and said no more. She took out a thin piece of yellow paper from the nearby cabinet and picked up a quill with her slender fingers dipping it in ink and quickly scratching out something. After a short while Fanny had filled the thin paper with words and she stuck the quill back into the ink pot. She handed the text filled thin paper to Han Shao and smiled this is the incantation and method for leaving a magical brand on a summoned dark creature. Give it to Lisa I think she will know what to do with her capacity as a novice mage. Elated Han Shao almost shook as he accepted the paper from Finny. He nodded with a dumb smile saying eagerly I'll go immediately Lisa will be very happy. Han Shao left Fanny's lab at an eager pace clutching the thin paper in his hands as soon as he he'd finished speaking. What an innocent little fellow. I hope that Lisa makes less trouble for him in the future because of this. Fanny smiled slightly and said with some emotion upon seeing Han Shao leave so urgently. Midnight The cemetery behind the Babylon Academy of Magic and Force. Oh endless darkness turn into destructive bone arrows and destroy according to my will bone arrows. A cuttingly sharp bone arrow materialized out of thin air as a lowly chanted incantation finished. Accompanied by a strident whooshing sound it connected violently with the chest of the straw figure in front of it. Ha ha I finally successfully released least a bone arrow. Han Shao laughed loudly and called out with pride after seeing that the bone arrow had neither broken in midair nor had been off course. A lot of time had passed since the incident that had occurred at the cemetery last time. Han Shao resumed his practice of the bone arrow magic whenever he was certain that no one would pay attention to the place. During this time his mental strength had increased at a rapid pace particularly after the encounter with the strange ball. Since he hadn't succumbed to that great calamity Han Shao O's mental strength had greatly increased. After repeated practice and enhanced magical knowledge Han Shao had finally mastered the low-level necromancy magic of Bonero to perfection without any mistakes. The little skeleton stood at attention in the distance its empty eye sockets vigilantly patrolling the four corners as its head swiveled. It grasped the bone dagger with its right hand and glowed with a cold dark light under the moonlight. He would be temporarily leaving the academy for the outside world tomorrow with Fanny and Co. The fact that Han Shao had used Lisa's name to ask Fanny some questions never came to light. After all this was just a small matter and Fanny wasn't someone who would ask about every little detail. She naturally forgot this issue after one or two days. Over the past couple of days Han Shao studied the foundations of necromancy and the descriptions of dark creatures as well as thoroughly reading and contemplating the words on Fanny's thin paper. He was confident that he would be able to leave a magical brand on the little skeleton. He planned to do so before he left on the morrow and started to plant a magical brand on the little skeleton according to his understanding. The little skeleton patrolling off in the distance came speeding toward Han Shao with a yank of his mental strength. The seven bone spurs on its back fluttered slightly in the air seeming to add a bit of power and causing the little skeleton's body to actually lift above the ground for a bit as it ran. This surprised Han Shao thinking that his efforts in refining the skeleton had not been in vain. It was apparent that just like him its strength had continued to increase. When the little skeleton came to a stop next to Han Shao he gathered his concentration in a way he never had before curling his fingers upwards in the air. He then started to lowly recite the incantation found in Fanny's notes. My loyal servant in the name of the summoner I leave upon you my eternal mark, Dark Seal. 
Han Sha Oh suddenly felt his mental strength drain rapidly away upon conclusion of the incantation and an inky black aura the size of a fist formed between his hands. The mental strength needed by this dark seal was more than what he'd anticipated. It was only then that Han Sha Oh remembered something he'd overlooked. Lisa was a novice mage and he was just a magic apprentice. Fanny's method had most likely been tailored for Lisa's mental strength and hadn't even considered the fact that a magic apprentice would be the one casting it. Han Sha Oh felt his headache fiercely as his mental strength was spontaneously depleted. He was involuntarily shocked by the feeling of something being drained away. At this moment the aura between his two hands abruptly drifted out sinking into the little skeleton's body between its two empty eye sockets. At the same same time Han Sha Oh felt extremely fatigued and sat heavily on the ground panting heavily as he did so. Suddenly it was as if a corner of a veil had been lifted over the foggy memories left by Chu Kang Lin and a portion of an incantation and memory became exceedingly clear. The newfound memories had to do with harnessing magical treasure and the harnessing magic incantation. This helped Han Sha Oh realize that he had gained better understanding of some part of Chu Kang Lin's indistinct memories under somewhat bizarre circumstances. A strange whooshing sound abruptly interrupted his thoughts and Han Sha Oh subconsciously raised his head to search for the its source. He was flabbergasted. The little skeleton was waving the sharp bone dagger around in an airy dance. Cold light sparkled around the little skeleton's body and dizzying waves underneath the moonlight. The bone dagger followed the movements of the little skeleton's hand and stabbed multiple times at the straw figure leaving it with the appearance of Swiss cheese. Han Sha Oh recollected himself after being dumbfounded his face full of incredulous joy. He threw his head back to the heavens and roared hot damn I'm awesome. Chapter 28 City of Zajoski A streak of white light flashed as Han Sha Oh and several necromancy students materialized within a circular magical matrix that was filled with magical symbols. Han Sha Oh had experimented three times last night and realized that he really could send his small skeleton to the other dimension and successfully summon it back again. He joyfully took out the money bag that had been hidden under his bed and made his preparations for the field trip. He now wore an expression of astonishment as he continuously darted his eyes around in close observation of the magical matrix. The large matrix was circular in form and on it was an enormous six-pointed star on the rock beneath his feet. Exquisite magical forms were carved into the magical columns nearby and a faint magical current emanated from the entire matrix. He had been standing in a similar transportation matrix in the Babylon Academy of Magic and Force a second ago. When the matrix had activated Han Sha Oh could only feel the strong magical current that permeated the Air. He had appeared here after a flash of white light from the students around him. Han Sha Oh understood that this was a magical transportation matrix. This kind of magical transportation was extremely rare and required a lot of complex magic and was costly to set up. Even eminent mages needed numerous quantities of magical ingredients in order to properly arrange the transportation matrix. Stop looking the magical transportation matrix is amazing alright but you don't need to make a big deal over it. Off to the side Lisa spoke up as she saw Han Sha Oh looking around gobsmacked. This magic was truly wondrous. Although Han Sha Oh had heard of magical transportation matrices this was the first time he'd experienced using one and naturally felt it was quite incredible. He gave up his observations only after he had carefully contemplated the area around the matrix. Han Sha Oh understood that with his currently shallow grasp of magical knowledge he probably wouldn't even understand the theories behind the transportation matrix much less be able to set one up. Not to mention that constructing such a transportation matrix would need an inordinate amount of magical ingredients. Even the Empire was unable to set one up in all the cities. Each activation required an awe-inspiring amount of energy. Even some ordinary noble families would be unable to bear the burden. If it wasn't for the Babylon Academy of Magic and Force having such a magical transportation matrix and Han Sha Oh hitching a ride off the coattails of the students it would have been extremely unlikely for him to ever travel through one in his lifetime. This area was the Zajoski city on the outskirts of the Lancelot Empire. 
Zajoski was the biggest city in the southwestern part of the empire with the Kurlin Valley to the west of it. One would end up in the land of the Orcs if they traveled west of the Kurlin Valley. To the south of Zajoski was the Dark Forest. All sorts of strong magical creatures lived within the expansive Dark Forest including the elves that worshipped nature. Things had never been peaceful for the city of Zajowski. The Empire had situated a lot of troops in Zajowski for defending against invasions by the savage orcs. It was said that the orcs lived in very barren land and that the savage race had long wanted to occupy the fertile lands of the Lancelot Empire. Zajowski was the Empire's strongest point of defense in the southwest and naturally enjoyed a lot of attention from the orcs. The Dark Forest was also a tumultuous area. Although the elves that worshipped nature were on more or less friendly terms with the empire many of the magical creatures within the dark forest often walked out of the forest to appear within nearby towns and villages. This caused things to be a bit tense in the towns and villages next to it. Perhaps the empire expended so many resources in setting up a magical transportation matrix within the city because of this unease. On one hand, this facilitated a connection between the Empire and Zajowski but on the other it was unable to support large-scale military deployments due to the sheer energy requirements needed to send through a limited amount of people. Zajowski's peculiar position turned this region into a heaven for adventurers. Merchants and adventurers of all sorts came here thirsty for gold and treasure. Whether it was the crystal core's bone skin or flesh of the magical creatures within the dark forest the priceless magical equipment forged by the elves some precious jewels from the barren wastes of the Orklands or the multitude of other items with heavy profits. These were the intended targets of all the gold rushers. Noble and respected mages welcome to the city of Zajowski. We hope you enjoy yourselves in Zajowski and obtain all that you need. The official in charge of the magical transportation matrix stood next to it and humbly bowed to Han Shao and Co. Thank you for your warm words I'm sure we will receive our just rewards. Fanny smiled and nodded her head at him and then glanced at the necromancy students. She said softly this is not a peaceful place everyone be careful and and don't let anything happen to you. Let's go. Fanny led the crew outwards along the main street when she finished speaking. Like Han Shao the students were gazing around with curiosity measuring up everything and everyone around them. Apart from the two teachers Fanny and Jean there were nine necromancy students and Han Shao bringing the total to twelve people. Fanny and Jean were adept necromancers. Fitch had not traveled with the group because he was still undergoing the test for adept mages. The strength of the remaining nine students was uneven. Other than a journeyman mage named Derek the rest were novice mages and magic apprentices. The buildings lining the street were all cut out of hard rock and lacked a touch of artistic beauty compared to the other buildings within the empire but gained a few traces of dignity and toughness. Due to the frequent orc attacks not only were the Zajowski city walls built to be impregnable but even the buildings were in the city were built on a principle of durability. Along the way Han Shao noticed that many weapon stores pharmacies magical item stores and provision stores could be found to the sides. There were also some small taverns for entertainment a slave auction and a bartering place for all sorts of materials. It seemed that merchants knew what sort of transactions would be most profitable because of the unique characteristics of this location. Those entering and exiting these locations were warriors, knights, mages of different majors, robbers, archers, merchants, poets, and even a few slender pointy-eared beautiful elves who were obviously from the dark forest. The sounds of the street vendors the elegant low chants from the poets the brays from the warriors steeds the clashes of sudden conflicts. These scenes were all completely beyond Han Shao's imagination. He was exceedingly astonished and had a better understanding of this chaotic city. Nothing much to see we need to leave the city before sundown. This isn't a place where we should spend much time. Our next stop is the town of Jal. If we can't reach it by sundown. We'll have to camp in the wilderness tonight. Jean called loudly and urged the students to walk faster. Hey hey they're all flowers in a greenhouse. For some of them it's their first visit to the city of Zojowski. No wonder they're so curious. They won't be in the future. 
Penny swept her clear eyes across the group and smiled involuntarily when she saw a few students extremely excited by the sights they were seeing for the first time. Brian are you okay with carrying so many things on your back? Next to Han Sha Oh Lisa frowned as she looked at Han Sha Oh and voiced a question. Hey Lisa when did you start caring for Brian? This doesn't seem like you. Novice mage Bella looked askance at Lisa and asked oddly. Apart from overseeing all the random little things Han Sha Oh was also in charge of providing manual labor during this field trip accompaniment. Although wondrous space rings that could hold items existed in this world they were quite expensive. It would be difficult for even ordinary noble families to obtain one not to mention commoners. None of these necromancy teachers and students were lucky enough to possess a space ring. Everyone had packed heavily for this field trip. As an errand slave Han Sha Oh had naturally taken up the role of a pack mule. Many items were lashed onto Han Sha Oh's back shoulders wrists and even his two legs. No one thought Han Sha Oh could carry so many items on him in the beginning. But they had piled all their belongings onto him after finding out with surprise that Han Sha Oh could still walk with ease when loaded down with so much. Although Han Sha Oh could play the fool and carry less, he didn't do so in order to further train his own body. He happily accepted the burden and now carried all sorts of items on him. A few bags even hung around his neck with only a happily smiling dust covered face apparent. Oh. I'm not having any problems. Han Sha Oh smiled slightly at Lisa and said in a carefree manner. After that incident in the trap in which Han Sha Oh had passionately declared his love Lisa's attitude towards Han Sha Oh had taken a huge turn. Her words had already started to defend him. Seeing that Han Sha Oh didn't recognize her good intentions and said such things Lisa harumped lightly and muttered to herself. Can't recognize my intentions what an idiot. And it's all thanks to you. If it wasn't for your agony of the soul how could Brian become this crazy but it's a bit strange Brian seems to have gotten taller and stronger since then and even his energy has improved. Lisa you're quite amazing. Bella exclaimed softly and said enigmatically. Bella none of your business. Shut up. Lisa flicked a glance at Bella and responded coldly. TCH. Who wants to mind your business? Just curious. Bella snorted and replied. Alright alright calm down. Let's walk faster to leave the city. Your delicate bodies are in for it if we don't reach till before nightfall. Fanny creased her brow and admonished lightly and then looked at Han Sha Oh. She said softly Brian are you truly alright? Han Sha Oh nodded and smiled slightly saying decisively no problem. Good rations give me strength. Fanny smiled and giggled upon hearing Han Sha Oh's words saying. Looks like me asking the school authorities to improve your rations has actually had some effect. The crew engaged in no more idle chatter after that and the students' gazes did not continue to wander around. They all rushed towards the city gates. Chapter 29 the feeling of contempt the band of twelve including Han Sha Oh were stunned by the magnificence of the city gates when they arrived at the city of Zajowski. The gates were all extraordinarily palatial and made from the strongest of rock. They were the color of dried blood and no one knew whether it was because too much of it had drenched the stones. Numerous guards dressed in full body armor patrolled the city walls several meters above the ground. All sorts of defensive measures could be seen on the city walls. From afar the city gates looked like the open fanged mouth of a bloodthirsty magic creature that devoured everything underneath the sun. Several sharp cold hangnails that looked like the sharp teeth within the creature's month peppered the city walls. Their cold light sparkled underneath the sunlight giving people an incredibly deterring spectacular feeling. The two ink black grand gates refined from who knew what were open. The city entrance was immensely expansive enough for ten horses to walk in abreast. It was quite crowded in front of the door and and various mammoth and strange magic creatures slowly threaded their way through the entrance into the city with all sorts of people and items on their backs. These magical creatures were larger than any beasts Han Sha Oh had seen before. They were about 5 meters tall and 10 or so meters long. Their skin was dark brown with heads shaped like an elephant's. Their faces were covered in wrinkles with two curved white tusks jutting out from their cheeks. The tusks themselves were a meter long. This is an earth dragon a gentler type of magical creature. They are easily tamed and move slowly but can carry heavy loads. They're a popular form of transportation within the empire. Merchants use earth dragons to transport heavy loads and trade with different areas. 
Fanny explained with a smile when she saw many students gazing at the earth dragons in astonishment. Master Fanny look after them while I go register at the officers' quarters. I'll also borrow a few battle steeds otherwise we'll never make it to draw by nightfall on foot. Jean looked at Fanny with sparkling eyes and spoke with a smile. His gaze fell on Fanny's beautiful face and didn't stray for a moment. The entire necromancy major knew of Jean's feelings for Fanny. Fanny herself was also aware but she never expressed anything. Jean wasn't in a rush and seemed to want to move Fanny with his sincerity. He often made use of various opportunities to express his feelings and staring at her soulfully for long periods of time was one of them. Han Sha Oh cursed privately upon seeing Jean's unfettered gaze. In Han Sha Oh's mind Fanny had long since become his personal property. He would naturally be irritated that other people were peeping at her in front of him but right now he was just a mere heron slave and wasn't strong enough to show his strength. Strength. So, although it wrinkled at him, he had to keep himself in check. Um, go ahead I'll watch them carefully. Fanny gave a tepid response and agreed with a smile avoiding Jean's fiery gaze. She turned her head to look at the magnificent city walls and said with emotion although I've seen these multiple times. I always feel proud of the Zajowski city gates whenever I come back to visit. It's because of these durable city gates that the savage orcs have always retreated with nothing to show for their efforts. Han Sha Oh was weighed down with all sorts of items and just about drowning in all of it. Everyone had stopped at this moment except for Han Sha Oh. He bent and then straightened his legs twisting his wrists and repeated the same boring movements. Brian what are you doing? Amy was standing next to Han Sha Oh and saw the piles of items moving along with Han Sha Oh's body. It caught her eye and she asked in astonishment. The others noticed his movements after Amy had spoken up and concentrated their attention on Han Sha Oh a perplexed look on each of their faces. Nothing much I'm feeling a bit sore and moving around will alleviate it. Han Sha Oh replied calmly with a dumb expression truly looking more than a bit dumb. Stupid be careful. You're carrying valuable items. If you accidentally break one, we wouldn't be able to cover the losses even if we sold you. Bella frowned and said coldly. Bella you're such an idiot. Those things are quite sturdy. How could they break so easily? No one has allowed him to carry anything truly precious or fragile. Lisa casted a look of disdain at Bella and replied sarcastically. You ladies are always arguing. Stop it. We always run into some danger whether big or small when we travel for training in the outside world. You should unite as a team or we're bound to run into problems further down the road. Fanny frowned and tried to separate the two when she saw Lisa and Bella were about to bicker again. Han Sha Oh completely ignored Bella's cold jeers and continued to repeat those boring actions. Those motions hadn't been left behind in Chu Kang Lan's memories but were muscle building actions that Han Sha Oh had seen before. In order to keep improving his body and break out of the solid realm, Han Sha Oh was taking advantage of every second to train his body. After a while, Jean returned with an ugly expression and empty hands. When he walked up to Fanny, he said furiously, Damn it, they asked me for money. Annie's elegant brows nodded together, and she spoke in surprise upon hearing those words. Our Babylon Academy of Magic and Force is the cradle for the Empire's knights, warriors and mages. We nurture so many talents every year for the Empire. Even many of the guard officers and mages stationed in the city of Zajowski graduated from our academy. There's a protocol between the academy and Zajowski. How dare they not lend us battle steeds? The guard officer was going to lend me the steeds when I said I was from the academy. When I offered my identification and he saw that we're from the necromancy major he actually mocked me. He demanded 50 gold from me saying that we would receive no steeds if we didn't pay up. He further added that our necromancy major has never nurtured any talents for the empire before and thus shouldn't enjoy free benefits. Jean was maddened and bit off his words. When the students heard his words they too found a common enemy and shouted angrily calling for revenge against the guard officer. It would seem that the, the feeling of contempt was a hard one to swallow. These students were already a bit aggrieved at joining an unpopular major and were hard pressed to contain their anger now that they were so ignored. Forget it take out 50 gold for him from the funds. These guard officers have lived here for a long time. Add to that the fact 
that our major truly has declined and occupies a lower standing in the academy. It's no wonder that they think less of us. I will report this matter to the dean upon my return. Let's not get into a fight with them right now. Fanny shook her head spoke a few conciliatory words with a dejected expression and finally made this reply to Jean. Jean at first disagreed with Fanny's words saying that they could not allow such arrogant soldiers to strut around but he sighed slowly and shook his head after a few placating words from Fanny gloomily accepting 50 gold coins from Fanny's hands and walking to the side of the city gates. Han Shao observed a few people then looked at the despondent Fanny. He threw a glance at the far-off guard officer and internally vowed that one day the necromancy major would regain its past glories through his hands and that people would tremble in fear at the sound of a necromancer. Don't be depressed, no one dared to look down on us when the necromancy major was at its peak. It's just that the necromancy major suffered from the ostracization of all the majors for a while. Legends speak of a great magic war that caused high casual amongst the necromancers and the loss of many incredible powerful spells. This is what's caused the decline of necromancy. Our trip to the dark forest this time is in search of a cemetery of death that I've heard rumors about. It's said that a wise mage who studied necromancy for many years once stayed within the cemetery of death. If we can find the cemetery and obtain the magical tomes of necromancy inside of it then perhaps we can alter the current situation that the necromancy major is in. Fanny spoke bracing words of comfort upon seeing students become melancholy. Many cheered up after hearing Fanny's words and expressions of joy and astonishment crossed their faces. It would seem that they were all prepared to give their all in this time's external outing. Seeing the ardor on everyone's faces Fanny gave a silent involuntary sigh. Although news had broken of the discovery of the cemetery the person who discovered it died not long after walking out of it. The dark forest was vast and to search for something within it was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Even she didn't hold much hope. Besides if such a location was truly discovered it was bound to draw in a horde of adventurers. It would be a bit unrealistic to think that the power of their band of twelve would be able to retrieve what they needed at that time. Fanny merely wished to comfort everyone with her words. The main purpose of this time's outing was to test the students' grasp of necromancy and help them realize magical knowledge in the real world. A. Eh? Aren't these people from the necromancy major? Are you adventuring as well? He he why? Why are you all standing here? A sweet voice sounded from afar as the necromancy students were sunk in their own thoughts. It was the light major student from last time Irene and a few other students and teachers from the light major. Her ardent pursuer Claude was also mounted on a tall battle steed and came clopping in from the distance. None of your business. Don't fall from your horse now. Lisa looked at Irene with contempt and sneered back. He he I know you must not have been able to borrow any battle steeds. I that's a foregone conclusion. Your necromancy major hasn't contributed anything to the Empire so of course it's a bit inappropriate that you use the Empire's resources without any payment. Irene chuckled charmingly as sarcasm and mockery filled her holy features. Although Lisa and company were enraged they couldn't find the words to retort back as Irene spoke the truth. They could only grit their teeth and fume inwardly. Hello Master Fanny. Light adept mage Beecher was mounted on a battle steed and greeted Fanny with a smile. Hello Beecher are you heading towards the dark forest for adventure as well? Fanny smiled in return and commented lightly. Yes we plan on traveling to the dark forest and hunting down the magic creatures that are often a nuisance to the villages around the forest. We'll be testing the students command of magic while giving back to the empire. Hey we'll be off see you later. Beecher replied gentlemanly but Han Shao could still discern a trace of disdain in his eyes as if Beecher looked down on the necromancy crew. Jean finally brought six battle steeds over after Beecher and the light major folk had zipped by on their large horses. Jean's horses were obviously subpar to the ones the light major students had whether in terms of physique or in number. It would seem that the necromancy major still couldn't obtain equal treatment even after paying 50 gold extra. But the necromancy group numbered 12 people whilst there was only six battle steeds. Therefore each horse had to carry double. The students looked at each other and quickly paired up leaving Han Shao, Fanny Jean and Bach as the odd ones out. Bach you and Brian share horse while I ride one with Master Fanny. Jean's eyes darted quickly and he became overjoyed when he connected the dots. He smiled happily at Bach. No, I'm definitely not riding a horse with that dirty errand slave. Bach held a grudge.
charge against Han Shao and immediately cried out in dissatisfaction. Everyone knew Jean's thoughts. This was a golden opportunity to get close to Fanny. He was about to respond huffily to Bok's yell when Fanny suddenly smiled. Since Bok is unwilling then I'll ride with Brian. Hey hey thank you Master Fanny. I'm coming. Han Shao was elated and joyously brushed past Jean striding quickly towards Fanny. Chapter 30 a tantalizing moment on the back of a battle steed on the way to the town of Draw The multiple items previously loaded onto Han Shao were divvied up between the battle steeds. Han Shao was seated behind Fanny and their bodies touched as the horse maneuvered. A faint alluring scent wafted toward Han Shao's nose and mouth as her hair swung in front of them. Fanny sat on the horse with her well-rounded upper body straight and proper. Her alluring curves beneath her mage robe were completely laid out for Han Shao's admiring glance. As the horse galloped the distance between the two started to close slowly. Towards the end Han Shao's lower abdomen and Fanny's full butt slowly touched. The swiftly galloping horse caused the two to be off balance and Han Shao's lower abdomen and Fanny's beautiful butt bounced off each other. The thin mage robe did nothing to stop the marvelous sensation and Han Shao's uncontrollable desires reared their heads as the bodies collided against each other's. Han Shao himself didn't know whether to laugh or cry when a certain portion of his lower body stiffened but he was unable to control his body's reactions. His upright lower body moved with the horse's ups and downs constantly moving in the area between Fanny's wondrous butt cheeks. Waves of strong stimulus came from the point of contact between Han Shao and Fanny stirring Han Shao's heart so much that he almost cried aloud. Han Shao stared at Fanny from behind and realized that at some point a red flush had crept up Fanny's pure white neck making her look even more tantalizing and mouth-watering. The sexy Fanny was already the subject of Han Shao's daydreams and he also happened to be at an age in which boys found it hardest to control their bodies. Add to that the fact that Han Shao was a virgin who had no idea what intimate relations felt like all this made the stimulus as earth-shattering as thunder and lightning. Everything became difficult to control after that. Unable to control his desires Han Shao was boldly wanton as he reached out his hand and slowly crept it toward Fanny's soft waist. Both of his hands firmly grasped Fanny's waist in order to more closely connect their lower bodies. Two bone-piercing pains instantaneously came from the backs of Han Shao's hands. He lifted his head in shock and immediately saw Fanny's ashamed and angry face. Fanny's beautiful face was red with anger as she turned her head and her mesmerizing eyes glared viciously at Han Shao. She said in a low voice damn it control yourself Brian otherwise I'll throw you off the horse. But Fanny could immediately tell that something was wrong with Han Shao. His face was bead red and his body convulsed spastically. He panted heavily and remained in this position for five seconds after which his entire body froze and then returned to normal. The only thing left was a mouth panting on and off. Fanny could clearly feel that something liquid and sticky had been added to the area between her behind. So. Sorry Master Fanny. I. I didn't mean to. Upon seeing that Fanny was about to spontaneously erupt in rage after Han Shao had discharged himself, he immediately reacted and whined guiltily but he kept revisiting the tantalizing moment in his mind and wasn't as afraid or remorseful as he pretended to be. Fanny was stopped up with rage. She also understood the nuances of Han Shao's current age and that their bodies had been touching in a rather inappropriate way. Han Shao's actions were out of instinct and most likely not his true intentions. But he had violated her in doing so. Even though the two hadn't really done anything being a woman Fanny naturally felt resentful and mad that Han Shao had relieved himself behind her. Han Shao would most likely be unable to handle it if Fanny really lost her temper and took it out on him since she was an adept mage. Han Shao also had feelings for Fanny and was truly afraid that Fanny would throw everything to the winds and beat him. He really didn't know what to do with her current mental state and was at a loss for what to do. Just as Han Shao was thinking random thoughts, he suddenly felt a severe pinch on the insides of his two thighs. He immediately ducked his head and cried out in pain hearing Fanny's voice at the same time damned Brian I'll settle things with you later. Master Fanny what's going on? Brian what are you going on about? Lisa had heard Han Shao's scream up ahead and looked back in question. No nothing. He lost his seat for a moment and was scared out of his mind. Fanny cut in to explain before Brian had a chance to open his mouth. 
Silence resumed as everyone continued to hurry down the path. Half an hour later Han Sha-o was amazed to discover that his lower body was standing up again. When Fanny felt the same thing, she immediately separated a short distance from the pack and reined in the battle steed angrily demanding that Han Sha-o steer the horse. Master Fanny I really didn't mean to and I don't know how to ride a horse. Han Sha-o clambered onto the horse with resignation under Fanny's angry motions and spoke with a pinched face. Shut up and listen to me. I'll teach you how to tame a battle steed. The two had switched positions with Han Sha-o in the front and Fanny in the back. Fanny who had always been gentle and nice to Han Sha-o was no longer so kindly disposed to him because of what had happened earlier and spoke angrily. Han Sha-o couldn't get a grasp on things under Fanny's directions at first and the battle steed branched around directionless. It rushed violently to and fro bring and screaming loudly. Han Sha-o and Fanny's bodies were off balance causing Fanny's full bosom to crash repeatedly into Han Sha-o's back. Learning how to ride a horse was the furthest thing from Han Sha-o's mind and he was completely distracted. After struggling for a while accompanied by Fanny's rage-filled shouts Han Sha-o finally began to tame the battle steed. Fanny propped herself up with two hands on Han Sha-o's back preventing her well-rounded chest from intimately touching his back again. She directed the path forward and they rushed towards Zhou. When Han Shao and Fanny had arrived at Zhou the sky was dusky and night about to fall. Jean and a bunch of necromancy students were all waiting for them anxiously staring at the road. Jean hastily walked out when Han Shao and Fanny appeared looking at her and quickly saying Master Fanny what took you so long? I thought something might have happened to you I was so worried. Nothing much just that Brian wanted to try his hand at steering the battle steed halfway through. I gave him some pointers thus. The reason for the delay. Fanny had already regained her composure at this time. She smiled as she looked at the group and chuckled faintly very good everyone is accounted for. Master Jean have we settled in at the hotel? That's been taken care of. We can rest as soon as soon as we stable our horses. We can head directly to the dark forest when dawn breaks tomorrow. Fanny alighted gracefully off the horse behind Han Sha-o displaying a nimble body. She stretched and frowned we've been sweating all day. I'm going to take Take a shower in the hotel. Brian come to my room after you've stabled the horses. We need to talk. Understood Master Fanny. Han Sha-o agreed with a wry face knowing full well that Fanny must want him with regards to his earlier violation. Fanny anxiously rushed off towards the hotel after she'd finished speaking. Han Sha-o felt the stickiness of his lower body and understood perfectly why she was so eager to take a shower. A hint of a smirk crossed his face. Han Sha-o and a few male necromancy students and stabled the six horses underneath Jean's guidance. They then all followed Jean to the hotel. Master Jean Dr. is far away from the Empire and directly faces the Dark Forest. There are many bizarre and unique shops in this town. Since it's not fully dark yet can we go take a walk? We know what the hotel looks like anyways so can we go back a bit later? Bok suddenly spoke up at this moment and the other students beside him were all chomping at the bit as well. It would seem that they were up to something else judging from their expressions. No. Jean denied them resolutely and then looked at them with a weird smile. He said lowly do you really think that I don't know what you're up to? This town of Drill is also called Town of Depravity because of its unique location. Danger can befall any of the adventurers and merchants who come here and so they all seek excitement whether in dreams or their waking moments. Moments. Thus, their entertainment industry is renowned throughout the empire. HMPH you are absolutely barred from opportunistic depravity. Indeed, Han Sha-o observed the surroundings closely after Jean's words and realized that although it wasn't truly night yet there were so many lights on Draw's wide streets that they were a neon blur. Several young girls wearing heavy makeup stood on the street corner flinging flirtatious smiles and catcalling the pedestrians on the streets giving off the impression of total submission to any bystander's will. Jean's words had obviously hit home as the despondent boys walked into the hotel with their heads trailing. They sighed and complained about Jean's Jean's heartlessness. The students all found their rooms with help from Jean after entering the hotel. Jean threw a glance at Han Sha-o and smiled faintly. We had limited funds this time and already took out 50 gold earlier for the battle steeds so for simplicity's sake I've arranged the abandoned storehouse for you. The storehouse is towards the back on the left hand side. There's no key just head on back. Jean spread his hands apologetically after his words and speedily left with a smile. 
Han Sha O could hear Jean's quiet snickering after a few steps and his low mutterings You mere heron slave how dare you share horse with my beloved Fanny, huh? The Han Sha O of now was hardly the Han Sha O of old. His senses were acutely perceptive within a short range and he heard every part of Jean's laughter and murmurings. Han Sha O smiled coldly and cursed in a low voice for a bit then smirked evilly. Just you wait until Fanny's mine. I'll see you cry tears of blood then. Han Sha O thought viciously as he made for Fanny's room.